Now on its 27th year, the school year 2024 to 2025, the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad is the oldest and most reputable nationwide mathematics competition among high school students. After its trial run in 1984, it was officially launched in 1986 and has been held annually since 2007. The country's contestants to the International Mathematical Olympiad are chosen from the top students who compete in the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad. The PMO is a project of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines and the Department of Science and Technology Science Education Institute. Hello, I'm Richard Eden. I help out with the Philippine Math Olympiad and the training of contestants of the Philippines in the International Math Olympiad. For today's video tutorial, it's going to be geometry. We start with the triangle ABC. From any vertex, we can draw many segments going to the opposite side. For instance, from vertex A, we can draw the perpendicular segment going to side BC. This is an altitude. There are two altitudes from the other vertices. The altitude from B, the blue segment, doesn't actually end on segment AC itself because angle A is obtuse. Therefore, it ends on line AC. Likewise, the green altitude from C ends on line AB rather than segment AB. A median, now that's another segment. It is drawn from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. As you can see, the median from A divides segment BC into congruent segments. Medians are always found inside their triangle, like this median from B, and also the median from C. Observe that, interestingly, all the three medians are concurrent. That's actually true of any triangle, but this concurrence, that's not our main topic right now. Another segment that we can draw is the angle bisector. Shown is the bisector of angle A. It divides angle A, or angle BAC, into two congruent angles. Angle bisectors are always inside their triangle, like the bisector of angle B. And it turns out, angle bisectors are always going to be concurrent. But again, this concurrence is not our main topic. From vertex A, this is the altitude. This is the median. And this is the angle bisector. Sometimes sa paghahalo ng mga contestants yung mga properties, halimbawa gagamitin nila properties ng median, eh, altitude naman pala yung segment, hindi median. So it's important to know what these segments are. But in this video, our focus will be on angle bisectors. The angle bisector from A divides the opposite side into two parts. Suppose their lengths are M and N as shown. Now, let's represent the lengths of the adjacent sides of the triangle. The length of side AB is small c, and the length of side AC is small b. This follows a common standard of naming a triangle side based on the opposite vertex. So, yung side BC, dahil opposite vertex A, that's small a. Therefore, small a equals m plus n. Now, it turns out that the... Label shown here, it turns out that the two parts of BC are proportional to the adjacent sides, M over C equals N over B. This is the angle bisector theorem. As you can see, for example, mas mahaba ang side AC kesa AB, so yung green segment N mas mahaba sa blue segment M. Hindi lang yun, proportional din ng lengths. Halimbawa, if side small b is double side small c, then cn dapat doble ni m. But why is this true? Here's a proof before natin gamitin. Extend ca up to a point e, up to where? Up to that location so that the segment be that's formed and the angle bisector da are parallel. The arrowheads in the figure denote this parallelism. Now, because of that, the angles marked in green, angles CAD and AEB, are corresponding angles, so they are congruent. Pero di lang yun. 
The angles now marked in blue, angles DAB and ABE, are alternate interior angles courtesy of the transversal AB. So, equal rin sila. But remember, the blue and green angles in the original angle A are equal because AD is an angle bisector. That means the blue and green angles at B and A are also equal. In other words, angle AEB equals angle ABE. And you know what that implies? That triangle AEB is isosceles. It follows that AE and AB are congruent. And since AB has length C, then AE also has length C. Now, focus on the largest triangle, CEB. DA is parallel to side BE. Thus, DA, that red angle bisector, divides sides CE and CB into segments with proportional lengths. Therefore, B over C equals N over M. Whether you leave it in this form or write it as the proportion in the theorem box above, we have proved the angle bisector theorem. Okay, so gamitin natin to. Here's an example. In triangle PMO, PM equals 4, MO equals 6, and OP equals 8.5. Segment MN bisects angle PMO. Find the lengths of PN and ON. Now, the sides of the triangle adjacent to PN and ON, so these would be sides PM and MO, respectively, alam natin ng lengths nila, 4 and 6 in that order. So the ratio of PM to MO is 2 over 3. But by the angle bisector theorem, this should also be the ratio of PN over NO. 2 over 3. So that means we can represent the lengths of PN and NO by 2x and 3x respectively for some positive number x. But we know their sum must be 8.5, and we can easily solve this for x, 1.7. And as soon as we know that, then we can figure out the lengths of PN and ON, which are 2x and 3x, or 3.4 and 5.1 respectively. So this is a direct application of the angle bisector theorem. Now, here's a problem from the 20th Philippine Mathematical Olympiad. The figure that's shown here was also given along with the problem. Here we go. In triangle ABC, the segments AD and AE trisect angle BAC. Moreover, it is also known that AB equals 6, AD equals 3, AE equals 2.7, AC equals 3.8, and DE equals 1.8. The length of BC is closest to which of the following? Here are the choices. 8, 8.2, 8.4, and 8.6. There are two other segments which make up segment BC. Let their lengths, segments BD and CE, be X and Y respectively. So we need to figure out what they are. In the red triangle ABE, AD is an angle bisector. So again, we can use the angle bisector theorem. We get the following. X over 1.8 equals 6 over 2.7. Means in proportion, that can be expressed in many different ways. Kung gusto nyo isulat, X over 6 equals 1.8 over 2.7. Of course, it's going to mean the same thing. Now, uh, consequently, X equals 4. Then on the right side of things in this indicated blue triangle, ACD, AE is an angle bisector. So similarly, we have the following. Y over 1.8 equals 3.8 over 3, which leads to the following. Y equals 2.28. So all we got to do now is add DE. And when you do, that's going to give us the length of BC, which is 8.08. So we have the answer, item A. On to the second and last problem of this video. Also taken from the PMO, the 20th PMO, problem number 14. Triangle ABC has AB equals 10 and AC equal to 14, the blue and red segments. 
A point P is randomly chosen in the interior or on the boundary of triangle ABC. What is the probability that P is closer to AB than to AC? The choices are 1 fourth, 1 third, 5 sevenths, and 5 twelfths. First, let's explore. Here are two points, D and E. It's quite clear that D is closer to AB while E is closer to AC. But how do we capture this exactly, this idea that D is closer to AB and E is closer to AC? Because, yes, kung titignan, obvious yun eh. Pero mathematically, how do we capture that fact? Well, if we're talking about closer, then that means we are talking about distances. The distance of D from the two sides are the lengths of these perpendicular segments from D to those two sides. Now, as you can see, the perpendicular from D going to AB is shorter than the one from D to AC. Uh, that's why D is closer to AB. On the other hand, the reason E is closer to AC is because the perpendicular from E going to this side is shorter than the perpendicular from E to AB. So a point can be closer to AB or closer to AC, depending on the length of the perpendicular segment from that point going to either side. Ang um, interesting e consider, paano nung mga nasa boundary? So what if you have a point P that's equally close to both sides, equidistant from both of them? So here in this illustration is such a point P. And so let K and L be the feet of the perpendiculars from P as shown with PK equal to PL. Now, what we get out of this configuration are the following two right triangles, blue triangle PAK and red triangle PAL. Now, these two triangles, okay, they share the same angle, 90 degrees. They share the same hypotenuse. And they also have two congruent sides, PK and PL. Now, there's more than one way to argue why, but the conclusion we get out of all these details is that these two triangles, they must be congruent. And you know what happens with congruent triangles? Corresponding parts must also be congruent. In particular, angle PAK and angle PAL, those angles indicated in green. So what this means is that point P must be on the angle bisector from angle A. Kasi, you know, PA, that segment, bisects angle A. Now, what do we get from this analysis? It's the following. P is equidistant from AB and AC if and only if P is on the bisector of angle BAC and vice versa. Lahat ng nasa angle bisector of BAC, these are going to be precisely the points that are equidistant from the two sides. So ngayon, you can use that as boundary because what that means is that uh, nung mga nasa left ng angle bisector, sila nung closer sa blue segment AB and nung mga nasa right ng angle bisector, sila nung mas malapit sa segment AC. So, all right. No angle bisector, let's label it as segment AQ that's shown here. So, again, the analysis that we uh, did allows us to make this conclusion. The blue triangle ABQ, which consists of everything inside triangle ABC, but to the left of the angle bisector AQ, these are the points which are closer to AB than to AC. So, an olithium problem, find the probability that a chosen point is closer to AB than to AC. Now, this problem can then be interpreted as this. Find the probability that a chosen point inside triangle ABC, no original, find the probability that that chosen point is in the blue triangle. Now, this isn't the kind of probability where you count objects, where you count number of points, because there would be infinitely many points inside any of the triangles here. So what we do is figure out, yung blue triangle ABQ, what part of the original triangle ABC does it occupy anyway? This probability is then the ratio of the areas of ABQ with ABC. Now, there's no way to get exact value for the areas, but that's all right because it's the ratio of their areas we need anyway. 
as they stand on segment BC drawn horizontally, we see that they have the same height. Now, what about their basis? Well, AQ is an angle bisector, and since AB and AC are 10 and 14, then they're in the ratio 5 is to 7. And by the angle bisector theorem, BQ and CQ must be, well, of the same ratio. So therefore, we can represent BQ as 5x and CQ as 7x. And so now we can write something for the areas of the two triangles that appear in our probability. For triangle ABQ, so you have one half, and then for base, so let's use 5x. And then height, let's use h. And incidentally, this is also going to be the same height that we can use for triangle ABC's area that we find in the denominator, except that the base that we're going to use is not 7x, because it's not triangle AQC that we're doing the comparison with, but with triangle ABC. So the base is BC, which is 12x. And so simplifying this gives us the ratio of their areas, 5 over 12, and that too is our final answer. So I hope you enjoyed these problems. Have a good day. Bye.